uh, over the preceding five videos, uh, the first five scenes of the play, uh, we establishes we establish the problem. Uh, act one establishes the problem. Uh, there's this uh, prince. Uh, he sees his dad's ghost. Turns out uh, his dad was murdered by his uncle, who's now king and married his mom. Uh, and the prince has to get revenge. Uh, act two uh, is where the plot thickens. So uh, over the two scenes uh, of act two, um, of which there are only two, uh, one very short and the other very, very long, uh, we will now see the plot thicken. Uh, what we expected uh, to see, or what we expect to see when the curtain rises on Act 2, Scene 1, is uh, some version of uh, Prince Hamlet proceeding with this revenge mission uh, that he got handed uh, at the end of the previous scene, at the end of Act 1, uh, possibly uh, in some way that involves this uh, antic disposition uh, we've been promised that he's going to put on. Um, instead, uh, Shakespeare plays uh, the same trick he played on us in uh, Act 1, Scene 3, right? 1.2 closes with Hamlet being told by Horatio and the guards that they've seen his dad's ghost and uh, arranging to wait with them for it on the battlements that night. Uh, we expect to see that. We're excited to see that. And instead, what we get when the curtain rises on 1.3 uh, is Laertes saying goodbye uh, to his dad, uh, Polonius, and his sister, Ophelia, before heading off to college uh, in France. Shakespeare makes us wait for what we want. He pulls the same trick again at the beginning of Act Two. Uh, we want to see Hamlet proceeding with the revenge mission, uh, and instead what we get is uh, that Polonius guy again uh, coming up with a plan to find out whether his son, Laertes, is behaving himself at college. Um, we're not sure why we care, but at least it's funny. Um, uh, it is in fact the first uh, uh, purely comic or at least predominantly comic uh, scene uh, in the play, uh, though it does turn uh, dramatic uh, at the very end. Most of it is funny. So far in the play, we've heard uh, isolated uh, witticisms, uh, characters, uh, uh, most chiefly Ham Hamlet himself make uh, comments that could fairly be described as wisecracks, um, but usually it's it's in the middle of a conversation that's about something so serious um, that we haven't really laughed yet. Um, act two, scene one is the first place in the play where uh, the audience is likely to, uh, you know, laugh out loud, you know, several times uh, in a way that is, you know, laughter, laughter, rather than uh, nervous laughter. Okay, so uh, for the first two thirds of it, we've got uh, Polonius giving instructions to his uh, assistant, right? Uh, Polonius's, uh, Claudius's Smithers. Uh, Polonius, it seems, has his own Smithers, uh, a guy named Rinaldo. Um, Rinaldo uh, uh, does not talk much. I guess it is difficult to get a, a word in when Polonius is around, especially uh, if he's your boss. Um, in fact, uh, pretty much everything Ronaldo says is, yes, my lord, uh, no, my lord, very well, my lord. Uh, this can uh, be, be played as though uh, it, it, it's not his first language. Uh, Ronaldo can be played with a, an accent, uh, as he is very uh, amusingly by uh, Gerard Depardieu in the, the Kenneth Branagh version. Um, but... Uh, even uh, uh, the, the problem might not be the language so much as Polonius. Uh, even someone who is fluent in the language might have a hard time keeping track of what the hell Polonius uh, is talking about. And, and this is the first place where we see, though we got hints of it in uh, 1.3, uh, you know, uh, not to crack the wind of the poor phrase, ringing it thus, um, you know, a little sneak preview of the fact that when Polonius hits upon a metaphor or figure of speech he likes, he just runs with it uh, until nobody cares anymore. Act two, scene one is the um, the first uh, place where the, the fact that this is the joke about this guy, that this is the joke about this character really takes center stage. Um, it can be one of the hardest things uh, about the play for beginners to appreciate, especially students who are reading it, 
rather than seeing it uh, performed. Uh, after all, it probably seems to, uh, you know, many people as though everybody in Shakespeare uh, takes way too long to say uh, what, uh, whatever it is that they're saying, way too long to uh, get to the point. Um, so it, it can be difficult to uh, discern, uh, you know, that, that being done as a joke rather than that being just, you know, always the case in Shakespeare. Um, it, it is one of the things where, it, one of the aspects of the play where it most helps to uh, see it performed um, rather than uh, just just to read it. Anyway, um, in, in lines uh, 6 uh, through uh, 14, we be, begin to get uh, the taste, begin to get a setup of what exactly uh, this plan is. Uh, Polonius wants Ronaldo to go to Paris, where Laertes is at college, and uh, inquire me first what dancers are in Paris, how, who, what means, and where they keep. So uh, go to Paris, find out you know, where all the Danish people hang out. Uh, by this encompassment and drift of question that they do know my son, come you more nearer than your particular demands will uh, touch it, take you as toward some distant knowledge of him, as thus I know his father and his friends and in part him. Uh, but if it be he, I mean he's very wild, addicted so-and-so, and there put on him what forgeries you please. Um, in other words, uh, don't uh, uh, show up and say, you know, I work for Laertes's dad and uh, his dad wants to know whether he's behaving himself. Obviously you can't do that. It won't work. Uh, if you're talking to his friends, they'll, they'll cover for him. Uh, oh, Laertes. Oh, he's, you know, oh, we're in bed at eight o'clock every night. Oh, we're studying. We can never get him to come out to the bars. Uh, but if you act like you already know he's doing that stuff, Hey, I knew a Laertes back in Denmark. If we're talking about the same Laertes, uh, that's the guy who's like uh, always uh, drunk and getting in fights and going to whorehouses, right? That Laertes. And then if he really is doing that stuff, um, his friends will uh, agree with you. They'll figure, oh, this guy's down. Yeah, that Laertes. We're talking about the same guy. Um uh, put on him what forgeries you please, such wanton, wild, and usual slips as our companions noted and most known to youth and liberty, as gaming, drinking, fencing, swearing, quarreling, drabbing. Um, uh, Ronaldo would know wherefore he should do this at around lines 37. Uh, and Polonius explains, um, you laying these slight sullies on my son, as twere a thing soiled with the working, mark you, your party and converse, him you would sound having ever seen in the predominant crimes the youth you breathe of, breathe of guilty, be assured he closes with you in this consequence. Um, I know the gentleman, I saw him yesterday or to other day or then or then. With such and such, as you say, there was a gaming there or took in rows there falling out of tennis or perchance I saw him enter such a house of sale, videlicet, a brothel. Um, if he actually has been doing this stuff and you act like you already know he has, uh, his friends will agree with you. Um, but if you, you act like you don't know it already, they'll lie and cover for him. Um, and in, in the midst of all this, we have one of the, the great in, in performance jokes with Polonius, uh, where he is taking so long to get to his point that he uh, forgets what is he forgets what he was going to say. Good sir, or so, friend, or gentleman, according to the phrase with the addition of man and country, and then sir does it this. What was I about to say? By the master, I was about to say something. Where did I leave? And poor Ronaldo, who's barely able to follow all of this, um, has to prompt him with a confused uh, at closes in the. Consequence, you know, Polonius is, is so in love with hearing himself talk um, that he will forget what his point is and get uh, hung up in figures of speech uh, for the sake of figures of speech, manners uh, for the sake of manners. Um, now, this is, uh, uh, well, as far as why, uh, I mean, he's written, you know, Shakespeare had written um pompous characters, uh, pedantic or pretentious characters uh, uh, before. Um, but as far as why put one of these guys in this play, um, it may have been to, uh, well, uh, frankly, to prevent us from noticing that the main character, Hamlet, who we're supposed to like, also tends to, to go on and on. 
um, by inventing the central character who is so intelligent, so eloquent, so uh, philosophically limitless, or Prince Hamlet, the, the, the smartest person who never lived. Um, Shakespeare created a problem for himself, right? He has this guy talk so much um, that, that it sort of stands out how much he talks. Um, Hamlet speaks something like uh, a one third of, or over a third of um, the lines in the whole play. That's a lot. Uh, that is a very, very high percentage uh, of the lines uh, of one play for a single character uh, to speak, even if it's the main character. Um, so as a sort of uh, uh, inoculation against uh, anybody going, hey, this Hamlet guy talks too much, uh, is Shakespeare makes, makes that the joke with another character, inserts this guy, Polonius, where the joke with him uh, is that he talks too much and takes forever uh, to say everything. So we're instructed to make that joke about him, uh, to laugh at uh, Polonius do, uh, doing it. And, and of course, the, the uh, content of their speeches, very different. Uh, though Hamlet does talk a lot, uh, he is, uh, to be fair, uh, almost always saying something pretty interesting as opposed to Polonius, who is talking uh, about nothing uh, just to hear himself talk. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's the difference uh, for, for the students in the audience, the difference between uh, good writing and bad writing. You know, does it come off like you have so much to say, you could barely get it into the small space that you were allotted? Or does it sound like you are... Uh, trying to expand something very simplistic and obvious to meet some required length. Uh, you know, Hamlet always seems like he's doing the former. Polonius seems like he's doing uh, the latter. So regardless of number of words spoken, Hamlet is engaging and Polonius is tiresome. Um, now, that that is not the only way uh, that we are uh, supposed to be, uh, that, that Shakespeare is... in. in instructing us to contrast uh, Hamlet with Polonius. Um, we already, uh, in, in 1.3, uh, in the, the to thine own self be true speech, in the advice to uh, his son Laertes, we, we saw how Polonius was way more concerned um, with uh, getting ahead in life, with fooling people, being all things to all people, doing whatever it is you need to do to, to you know, give people what they want and kiss up to them and get ahead in life. Um, and, and we had it pointed out in that video, the video about 1.3, that this famous phrase of his, to thine own self be true, manifestly does not mean uh, be yourself, as so many people seem to think it means when they quote it, um, but rather means uh, something like look out for number one, uh, do what you have to do uh, to get ahead. Um, we were contrasting uh, that speech with Hamlet's uh, uh, seems, madam, nay, it is, I know not seems stuff from the previous scene from 1.2, right? Uh, Hamlet is all about honesty, uh, what's on the outside matches, what's on the inside, uh, and Polonius is all about uh, uh, plots and uh, deviousness. Um, uh, sometimes it seems deviousness for the sake of deviousness, tricks for the sake of tricks, uh, uh, spying for the sake of spying, uh, unnecessary complexity for its own sake, even to a point where it confounds his purposes. Um, the, 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 the running joke here um, is that the reason he's sending Ronaldo all the way to Paris to do this is that he's concerned about his son's reputation, but by sending this guy uh, to Paris to go around essentially spreading rumors, about Laertes, uh, Polonius is going to end up ruining his son's reputation uh, while trying to safeguard it. Um, so it, it, this this taps into the you know timeless idea that you know if you try to exert too much control over something that you're worried about, you're going to end up you know screwing it up yourself. Um, you know, and, and this has though in this scene it's funny implications for other aspects of the play, other places in the plot that are more serious.
see you now, Polonius observes uh, around line 60. Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth, uh, and thus do we of wisdom and of reach with windlasses and with assays of bias by indirections find directions out. And it's those four lines that are that are the, the heart of this scene. Um, your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth, right? You uh, uh, find out what the truth is by lying, right? By indirections, find directions out. Uh, figure out what the right way is by going the wrong way, right? He wants Ronaldo to go to Paris and tell lies in order to obtain the truth. Uh Polonius is trying to get out of there. You know, one of these conversations where you've you know got your hand on the doorknob, the other guy's still talking, and you're going uh huh uh huh uh huh okay. And uh, he finally gets out of there. Polonius gets one last uh, one last laugh line as Ronaldo is on his way out the door, and let him ply his music, meaning you know make sure he's keeping up with his music lessons. The audience laughs at that. Uh, that laugh is still hanging in the air when from the other side of the stage. Uh, Ophelia rushes in, terrified. Uh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. Uh, with what? In the name of God, her father responds. And the, the uh, mood of the scene abruptly changes. We had been laughing at the first two thirds of 2.1. The last third suddenly uh, is, is very serious. We don't know what has frightened Ophelia uh, so much, but when she finally tells us, it is the following. Um, Lord Hamlet with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, unguarded, and down jived to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport as if he had been lucid out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Um, so uh, uh, Hamlet just burst uh, into her room, uh, well, uh, uh, looking like he's just seen a ghost, as the saying goes. Uh, we, of course, know that this is literally uh, exactly what has just happened, though these characters don't know that. Um, Polonius assumes it was for a, uh, a very different reason. Uh, mad for thy love, uh, he asks. Um, Ophelia responds, my lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. Uh, remember, at the end of um, the last scene that featured these two characters, at the end of uh, 1.3, um, Polonius, uh, being a concerned uh, about the, the rumors that uh, uh, Hamlet and Ophelia had been getting too close, forbids his daughter Ophelia to see Hamlet anymore. Um, so now he assumes uh, that, that you know what's been bothering Hamlet is the fact that he wasn't allowed to see Ophelia. And we get um, this great description uh, in uh, one of her longest unbroken speeches. Um, he took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus over his brow he falls to such perusal of my face as I would draw it. Long stayed he so, at last a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down he raised a sigh. So piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their helps, and to the last bended their light on me. This great description of Hamlet rushing into her room, seemingly terrified, uh, no hat on or anything, um, uh, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking. Uh, rushes up to her as though uh, he has something very important to tell her, and then without speaking, like the ghost, like how we got these two in 1.1 and 1.4 scenes where the ghost shows up like he has something uh, very important to say, um, uh, or in Horatio's phrase from, from 1.2, it uh, uh, addressed itself to motion like as it would speak, but even then the morning cock grew loud and acted like he was about to say something and then drew back and didn't. We see, or we hear about, right? We don't see, that's important. We hear about Hamlet reenacting the, the same sort of body language here, rushing into Ophelia's room um, like he's just about to say something. It always reminds me... Um, you know, oh, oh, you know, one of those scenes where you know Daffy Duck is so pissed at Bugs Bunny <laughs> and goes like, 
like he's about to, you know, curse him out, but you know, there's <laughs> he can't think of anything strong enough to say and just freezes there like that and walks away grumbling. Um uh, like he's about to say something, touches her face and then backs, you know, out of the room, you know, without even looking at where he's going, staring at her uh, the whole time, leaves the room. Uh, 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 understandably, this freaks Ophelia the F out and she, she runs uh, to, to tell her dad. Um, now, uh, uh, Polonius then uh, assumes uh, that, uh, uh, well, he misjudged Hamlet. This is the very ecstasy of love whose violent property fordoes itself. Um, it, it, Ophelia reminds him that as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his, his access to me. And, and Polonius says, that hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not coded him. I feared he did but trifle. In other words, I thought he wasn't serious about you, but uh, if not being allowed to see you has driven him insane, then he must have really loved you after all. I guess I misjudged the guy. Um, and uh, we get in the, the closing lines here, uh, some of, you know, one of the sharper things to give the guy his credit, uh, to give the guy's credit that Polonius ever says, um, by heaven, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves and our opinions as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Uh, in other words, uh, it is as common as usual, as typical for uh, we old guys to uh, act like we know more than we do, uh, as it is for young people to act rashly and, and not know enough, not know things that they really should know. Uh, this provides um, a, a really a lovely counterweight to uh, his son's lines um, from, from 1.2, uh, 1.3, sorry. Uh, Be wary then, best safety lies in fear. Youth to itself rebels, though none else near. Um, young people are so obsessed with breaking rules that they'll uh, break rules that it hurts themselves to break just for the sake of breaking a rule. Uh, a valid criticism of young people, um, but Polonius here balances it out with a, an equally valid criticism of older people. Uh, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves and our opinions as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Um, almost as though he's deliberately uh, responding to those lines of his sons that he did not hear in 1.3 because it was just before he entered. Uh, and uh, in the closing lines, Polonius resolves, uh, come go we to the king, uh, this must be known. In other words, come on, let's go tell the king, let's go tell Claudius that we've uh, figured out what's been bothering uh, his, his nephew Hamlet. It's the fact that he's in love with you. Now, uh, this is a, a bit of uh, dramatic irony here, right? Audience knows something that the characters don't know. Um, sometimes Shakespeare uses dramatic irony uh, uh, to make a, a, a sad thing sadder or a painful thing more painful as when, uh, you know, the, the audience knows that uh, Juliet's not really dead, but Romeo doesn't know that, right? Dramatic irony is the audience possesses information that the characters don't possess in a given scene. Here, uh, we see Shakespeare using dramatic irony to make a funny thing funnier. Uh, we know that Polonius is wrong. Ah, he thinks that uh, Hamlet's uh, crazy because he's in love with Ophelia. Uh, we, the audience, know that nothing could be uh, further from the truth. Hamlet's basically forgotten Ophelia's name at this point. He's all about his dad's ghost and the revenge mission. So, boy, this is going to be good. Uh, I can't wait to see Polonius tell the king uh, that he's figured out what's bothering Hamlet and be totally wrong. Uh, and knowing Polonius the way he says it is going to be ridiculous, too, where we're already laughing, anticipating uh, this conversation uh, with the king. We can't wait to see it. Um, so uh, lingering questions about uh, Act 2, Scene 1. Why didn't Shakespeare show us this? Right? We don't see uh, Hamlet burst into uh, Ophelia's room, uh, you know, pale as assured his knees knocking and uh, fall to perusal of her face and uh, out of doors find his way without his eyes, right? We have Ophelia 
burst into Polonius's room and tell us that all just happened, you know, off stage. Um, it was, though there are other uh, uh, great things and, and much to recommend the 1990 version of Hamlet, uh, the Mel Gibson one uh, directed by Franco Zeffirelli, uh, uh, most, most chiefly, I think, uh, Glenn Close's performance as, as Gertrude. Um, one of the things I, I do not agree with uh, about it um, is that they show us this. They actually, as a mute scene, have um, uh, Mel Gibson Hamlet come into the room of uh, Helena Bonham Carter Ophelia and do the perusing of the face and the leaving the room uh, backwards. I don't think it should be shown. I think part of the point is that we're told about it and we don't see it. Now, we want to see it, Certainly, um, Hamlet speechless uh, is not something uh, we hear about every day. Uh, such a thing can uh, scarce be believed. Hamlet lost for words is something we're very sorry we missed. Uh, he normally has a lot to say. Um, so uh, there, 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 we must ask ourselves, why didn't Shakespeare show us this? Um, well, I think so uh, to... to, to reinforce the fact that there's two ways we can take it. Um, now, we can't help but notice that this worked out uh, worked out pretty well for Hamlet, right? Um, at the end of the last scene, uh, he was talking about how to throw everyone off his trail, or put on some antic disposition, um, and look how well uh, this worked out for him. Uh, Polonius now thinks that uh, what's bothering Hamlet isn't anything about any, any ghost or any revenge, but merely that he's in love with Ophelia and he's on his way to tell the king. Couldn't have worked out better for him. Worked out, in fact, suspiciously well for him. So what we're wondering is, was this uh, uh, hatless, pale, uh, knocking, bursting into Ophelia's room genuine on Hamlet's part? Right? Uh, was what did after seeing his his dad's ghost? He he genuinely, you know. Um, really does love Ophelia, uh, needed to be with her. Uh, uh, his first thought was to rush with her, uh, rush to her, and, and then uh, realized um, realized at the last minute, wait a minute, I, I've got to kill the king. I can't get Ophelia mixed up in this and, and actually does have to, uh, uh, you know, drag himself uh, uh, away, uh, you know, against against his own will. Or... Was the whole thing fake? Is he just messing with her? Thinking, okay, well, I've got to throw everybody uh, off my trail about this whole revenge thing I've got to do. I know. Uh, I'll get rid of my hat, mess up my shirt, uh, uh, burst into Ophelia's room, act all crazy, uh, scare the crap out of her. She'll run off and tell her dad. Um, and, uh, you know, her dad, who thinks everything revolves around, uh, you know, him and his family, is going to think I'm in love with her, and he'll want to kiss up to the king. He'll, he'll go tell the king, perfect, everybody will uh, be barking up the wrong tree about what's really bothering me. So, was this bursting into Ophelia's room uh, genuine on Hamlet's part, or is he just, just using her? Um, we don't know. And it is one of the first parts in the play where we have a... Um, a, a really big, you know, you can take it this way or you can take it that way. And our opinion of him, um, you know, and whether he, he, you know, actually loves Ophelia or whether he's a, a, a um, just a, already at this early part of the play, a complete uh, Machiavelli who's, who's uh, putting on an act and using her. Um, you know, th there's, you know, it, it's not even a question of it being played. Uh, it's not one of the things where we can say, oh, it can be played this way or played that way, like his madness in the next scene. Um, it, it's not a question of it being played at all because we don't even see it. We're just told about it. Um, but it does, if we take it the second way, uh, it, it diminish this idea of Hamlet as uh, Mr. Honesty. Uh, as Mr. I know not seems, as Mr. Uh, uh, what you see is, is what you get, um, and it makes him a lot more like Polonius, who had been spending the first two thirds of the scene talking about putting on an act in order to get what you want out of people. Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth, 
by indirections, find directions out. We heard those lines. And at the time we're thinking, oh, you know, Polonius is a terrible guy. Hamlet's a great guy because um, he's so honest. But he did at the very end of the last scene talk about putting an antic disposition on. Antic disposition sounds like a pretty uh, fair description um, of, of uh, all this, this uh, act, if it is an act he puts on when he bursts into uh, Ophelia's room. Um, so if so, then... Hamlet is no longer Mr. Honesty, uh, uh, no more Mr. I Know Not Seems, and is starting to be a, a more like, um, you know, a, a, a devious schemer and manipulator of people like Polonius. Uh, so maybe the lesson here is, um, if we do take it that way, that, uh, you know, it's one thing to be uh, Mr. Honesty if you don't have anything to accomplish, if all you need to do is is strut around a palace being depressed. But as soon as, you, as you've got something you have to do, a revenge mission or, or whatever else you need to accomplish in life, um, you know, suddenly being completely honest all the time is, is um, you know, a, a much taller order uh, than it was a moment ago. So... Um, we're certainly anxious to see, uh, uh, you know, how Hamlet is going around acting uh, now, and we will uh, get uh, the, 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 an enormous dose of that in the very long uh, Act Two, Scene Two. See you then.